right. Remember that the pupil of the eye is always black. This is an older gentleman, and he's going to have some wrinkles. Again, these are called crow's feet, because uh, generally there are three of them. These are these lines that kind of come out the corner of the eye. The eyelid line sits just above the eyelid, and that's where the, it's, that's where the excess skin of the eyelid goes when the eye is open. Your eyebrow is, is also curved just above the eyelid line, and it's fairly, fairly bushy, goes to about the um, wrinkles out here, and then goes almost to the corner of the eye, but not quite. It has two highlights. Okay, so depending on what the reflection is in the eye, sometimes it's one, sometimes it's two, sometimes it's more than that. All depends on what the person is looking at when the picture is taken. And if you're trying to do photographic realism, you kind of want to match that up pretty, pretty well. But in any case, make sure that you have a highlight of some sort, at least one. To prevent it from looking dead because the highlight is what gives the eye life and makes it look like we're looking at a real person providing we can get the textures correct remember you can blend but again be careful don't overdo just use the tip lay it on its side slightly and just smooth that out a little bit And away we go. All right. Um, remember to take this iris and break it up into eight equal sections, like pieces of a pie. Um, and we don't want to make these lines too dark because we don't want them to show up in our final drawing. Uh, we make them nice and light for us to be able to see them and use them. But then once we start to our texture, they just they just blend right in. Um, we don't want to see the final product that where we see eight different sections of value. Okay, this one has a couple lines that you can see that are a little bit too dark, and I can go in and soften those later. But again, you can use a wooden pencil on this, and just take your pencil and just work it from the edge, from the outside in, very gently. A little bit at a time. I'm not going all the way because remember that I will turn this around and use a page to cover my other eye so I don't mess it up. And I'll go the other direction. Always one direction. Again, this is called feathering. And I guess that's because it resembles a feather and that feathers kind of taper at the end. And that's what your lines do. They taper at the end, they disappear. 
and I keep moving the eye around because it's always easier for me to move away from myself. I have greater control if I'm pushing the pencil away rather than pulling it towards me. This process does take a little time, but it is well worth it. If you make your initial wave kind of separated like this, it's okay. You just got to go back in and solidify that value. You don't want to leave it with a bunch of lines that are far apart. Remember that there's a ring around each iris, so you can, as you go, you can develop that. Just make that line just a little bit darker. Take your time, don't rush it.
So again, this is important where you have two eyes you're working on and you have to compare them. So this was the first one that I did. This is the second one that I'm working on. You can see that the first one is significantly darker. So I still have some work to do here. And I'm going to go back in with my mechanical pencil and uh, smooth some things out, darken some things as well. Still a 2B lead. Again, be careful with the blending. Go around the outer ring gently. Remember that the eyelid itself will cast a little bit of shadow on a bright day. And will affect the iris at the top as well as the whites of the eye.
So next step, before we do anything else, we have the eyebrow and the eyelashes left. But before we do that, we have to apply value. Just a light glaze over the top. Also including the space where the eyebrow will sit because we don't want any white popping up through there. We want to have a gray undertone, not a white one. And this is going to go down slightly. So this, this gentleman has some age once again, so there's going to be a little bag forming here, some looser skin underneath the eye. and then a light blend. Treat these wrinkles as distinct parts, so don't try to like go one direction over all three of them. Remember, really your blending stick on its side. Don't use it like a pencil. Don't use the tip. Thumb underneath, fingers on top. If you have trouble getting an even tone, circular motion works best. Don't have to press super hard. Just gradually. A little bit, a little bit darker than over here, so I'll either have to lighten this up or go back in over here and darken this up. But I don't, that, don't have to do that just yet. And remember the tear duct line on this side, where there's a little piece of skin between the eye and the eyelashes at the bottom. All right. The eyebrow will be next. And again, we just use a 2B pencil with a fine point. Work the same direction, still feathering, one direction only, picking your pencil point up off the paper as you go, making sure that it starts, checking with the other eye, making sure that it starts in the same place, basically the same shape. and it curves right over the top of the eye like a rainbow. Sometimes the lines crisscross. They don't flow quite as evenly as eyelashes all the same direction. They go different directions sometimes.
But again, be patient, add enough layers so that these uh, lines start to grow together. You're giving the illusion of, of hair in an eyebrow. Um, in actuality, there would be hundreds more lines if we were supposed to do absolutely every line that exists, every hair that exists in an eyebrow. But we're just providing enough information to make it look like one. You see how that gray undertone works really well now because it's not white showing through, it's gray, light gray showing through. And for an older gentleman, you know, their hairs start to turn a little gray. I'm a testimony to that. And so you're not going to have always the same value of hair. Remember that the eyelashes do not start down in the corner. They start about a third of the way up. And for a guy, they're not that long. Start out sparsely at first. And then start to change direction a little bit. As we move out and they go down and up. Down and up, not just up. Just enough for us to be able to see them. And on the bottom, we go again about a third of the way in, loosely, but from this secondary line, the tear duct line, not up just below the iris. That's very important. Now that both eyes are done, we can really start to play back and forth between the two. Okay, are the eyelashes correct? Are the values correct? And you can just start to Go back and forth now and play around with anything that you see that is not accurate or if one stands out as a different value or a different size and go back in and make those changes. Smooth things out. Redefine any lines that you may have lost. If you have your guidelines still there, those can be completely removed. They have served their purpose. Any fingerprints, smudges that might appear.
kneadable eraser is an invaluable tool, leaves no residue behind.